Lesson 1. Angles. Basic definitions. A ray is a line with a starting point extending in one direction. A line segment is a part of a line with two endpoints. An angle is formed by two rays or two line segments which have a common initial point. A common way to measure angles is by using degrees. Anytime we have an angle we can imagine the angle as part of a circle. In this picture we can see that when we form a circle centered at, at the point where the rays intersect we get what looks like a pizza slice. This pizza slice is a part of the whole circle. A full circle is defined to have 360 degrees, abbreviated as 360 with a little circle, which is a Babylonian tradition to count quantities multiples of 60. Let's say, for the sake of example, that in this example this pizza slice is one-sixth of the full circle. Then the angle formed by those two rays will be equal to one-sixth of 360 degrees, which is 60 degrees. If an angle has a measurement of 40 degrees, it means the pizza slice formed by the angle will be 40 out of 360, which is one-ninth of the full circle. There are two important angles that come up in geometry. The first is called a right angle. This is an angle formed by two rays which form a quote-unquote pizza slice that is one-fourth of the full circle. The second one is called the straight angle. This is an angle formed by two rays which form a slice that is half of the whole circle. Therefore, a right angle has a measurement of 90 degrees and a straight angle has a measurement of 180 degrees. Note that it's customary to denote angles by a little circular arc in a picture, but the right angle is the only angle whose standard picture is a little square arc. An angle is called acute if its measure is less than 90 degrees, and it's called obtuse if its measure is greater than 90 degrees. When an angle exceeds 180 degrees, it's called a reflex angle. Note that a reflex angle is obtuse, but not all obtuse angles are reflex. Angles formed by intersecting lines. Let's say that we have two intersecting lines, and we'll call the four angles alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. The angle pairs alpha beta, alpha gamma, beta delta, and delta gamma are called adjacent angles, while the angle pairs alpha and delta and beta and gamma are called opposite angles. Since adjacent angles form a straight angle, they have to add up to 180 degrees. So we can say alpha plus beta is 180 degrees, and beta plus delta is 180 degrees, etc. From these relationships, it can be easily derived that opposite angles are always equal to each other. Thus, angle alpha is the same as angle delta, and angle beta is the same as angle gamma. To see why this is the case, we can observe that since alpha plus beta is 180 and beta plus delta is 180, it follows that alpha plus beta equals beta plus delta. Now, if we subtract beta from both sides of the equation, we get alpha equals beta, or excuse me, alpha equals delta. The proof that beta equals gamma is a similar such justification. Angles formed by parallel lines. Two lines are said to be parallel if they do not intersect. In this example, let line 1 and line 2 be parallel lines, and the other line, line L, is a line that cuts through both parallel lines. This line is called a transversal. The transversal creates eight angles. We already know that angle 1 equals angle 4, and angle 2 equals angle 3, as those are opposite angles. It's also true that the corresponding angles on line 1 and line 2 are equal as well. Thus, angle 1 equals angle 5, angle 2 equals angle 6, angle 3 equals angle 7, and angle 4 equals angle 8. We can say that the corresponding angles formed by a transversal line cutting through two parallel lines are equal. Now since angle 1 equals angle 4, because they're opposite angles, 
and angle 1 equals angle 5 because they're corresponding angles between parallels, it follows that angle 4 equals angle 5. In other words, the Z-letter shaped segment has equal angles. These are also sometimes referred to as alternate interior angles because they are on opposite sides of the transversal and inside the two parallel lines. Angle sums in triangles and polygons. A fundamental theorem about angles is that the sum of the angles of any triangle equal up to a straight angle, or 180 degrees. In other words, if alpha, beta, and gamma are angles of any triangle, then alpha plus beta plus gamma equals 180. To see why this is true, we can start with any triangle and construct a line through one of its endpoints, or vertices, that are parallel to the opposite segment. As the two slanted lines of the triangle form transversals between the two parallel lines, we can apply our reasoning that Z-shaped angles, or alternate interior angles, are equal between parallel lines. It is now clear that alpha plus beta plus gamma form a straight angle, so its measure is 180 degrees. A polygon is a closed curve that is made out of straight lines. It is a general theorem that if a polygon has n sides, then its angles add up to 180 times n minus 2 degrees. A triangle, for example, is a polygon with three sides, so n equals 3 and hence its angle sum adds to 180 times 3 minus 2, which is 180. A quadrilateral is a polygon with four sides, n equals 4, so that its angle sum will be 180 times 4 minus 2, or 360 degrees. For a seven-sided polygon with n equals 7, its angle sum will be 180 times 7 minus 2, which is 900 degrees.